You are good all the time and all the time. You are good. You are good all the time and all the time. You are good. You are good all the time. So we got to serve God right here and we got to serve God right now. How many is willing to say right here, right now? That's how we got to praise him. That's how we got to worship him right here and right now. The song says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Come on, those of you who know it, help me sing it. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yes, I will. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. Come on, sing it. The Lord is my life and salvation. 
will not be a pain. I will wait on you. about us. He's thinking thoughts that we would have hope and, and expected in. Hallelujah. And so because he's thinking those thoughts, we ought to realize how much he loves us. We ought to realize how much he's for us and not against us. And so I heard a psalmist say one time that we love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. And that's why when we get to this part of the song, we can really decree and declare. We said I hope on you. We said I hope by your love. We said I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We said. Thank you. 
Come on, declare it out of your mouth. I will remain confident. It's a faith statement. I will see the We walk by faith and not by sight. I will remain. Yes, I will remain. I'm gonna see the goodness of the Lord. You need to hear yourself saying, I will remain. I will remain. In this. I this. You might not can see and manifest right now, but I will remain. I will remain. Confident. Confident. As long as I keep walking, as long as I keep talking, say, I will remain. It's going to become tangible. It's going to be manifest. I will, I will, I will remain confident in this right. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Last time, I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see. We're going to see it. Hallelujah. You might not can feel it. You might not can touch it. Hallelujah. You might not can smell it. But one day, one day in the near future, it's going to manifest right before your eyes. And you're not going to be surprised because you've been waiting on it. You've been praying for it. You've been fasting for it. Hallelujah. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. God is exalted and the devil is defeated. And we have the victory. Be confident in that. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. Hallelujah. Woo! Remain in that confidence. Remain in that confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was sitting here, Hag Haggai 2 just kind of kept ringing in the last couple of services in my spirit. And I'll just read this real quick. We could play softly. But we, after this, I just want to release a shout. Just a shout that will just shake heaven and hell. And so we're just going to read this real quick. It was talking about the new temple. This new temple. And the Lord came unto prophet Haggai and said uh, and I'm going to skip down and I'm going to go the, 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 um, the second chapter, the third verse it says, does anyone remember this house? This temple in its former splendor, in its former glory. Now we in February, we're in the second month of this year. Things are starting to happen. You can't really see anything right now, but things are starting to happen. And then further, so further down it says, in comparison, does it look, does it even look like something right now? Does it look like something right now? It might not seem like nothing is happening at all. But in the background. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, be strong. Just be confident. Stay confident. In this. My God. And he says, my spirit remains among you. As I promised you when you came out of Egypt. So don't be afraid. 
Come on, is that speaking to somebody right now? And he said, for this is what the Lord of heaven, heaven's army said. In just a little while, I will again shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake all nations and the treasures in all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Everything is mine, says the Lord. And the former glory of this temple will be greater than its past. The future glory, I'm sorry, of this temple will be greater than the former, says the Lord. I will bring you and I will be with you. So in, in, I want you to give God a 30 second, and I know they laugh at me all the time, 30 seconds. I want you to give a shout for the former, for the former, for the things that you had in the past, the things that you, that you went through, the things that you accomplished. They're nothing like what's going to happen, what's happening now for you. So I want you to just shout. I don't care anybody around you. It doesn't matter. One, two, three. Just give a shout out to God.
greatest power. He's the greatest power. He's the greatest power. So whatever you're facing right now, it's defeated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, lift those hands. Lift those hands in victory. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to praise him. Sometimes you got to praise your way through that thing. You got to praise your way through that heaviness. You got to praise your way through it. You got to praise your way through it. That's it. That's the key. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, we go. I want to stay right there. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. We're going to say our statement of purpose as we praise him. As we praise him. Hallelujah. Just put it up on the screen. Don't even worry about it. We're going to walk through. We're going to work, through, work our way through this. Together, Bethesda World Harvest International Church is a body of believers who serve in the spirit of excellence by doing the little good things consistently. We have a whole extra ministry, meaning the spiritual, physical, and social needs of our community, from its infants to its seniors, exemplifying the characteristics of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We create an environment where believers of all ages, ethnicities, and social status are transformed by the Word of God. Now I want you to go to your neighbor. I want you to give a quick dance with your neighbor. Get a quick hug with your neighbor. I'm glad to see you in the house this morning. Tell them, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Encourage you. Be strong. 
Good morning, Bethesda. These are your announcements for February 23rd, 2020. Sister Gina is asking all junior ushers, along with their parents, to meet with her directly after service today. Junior ushers and their parents meeting with Sister Gina today after service. There will be corporate fasting and prayer starting Wednesday, this Wednesday, February 26th, and ending this Friday the 28th with prayer from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. in collaboration with the 2020 Citywide Worship Service. That's beginning this Wednesday the 26th and ending with prayer on Friday the 28th. We will be honoring Black History on Sunday, March 8th and asking everyone that can to wear African attire on Sunday, March 8th. There will be a NACA free home buyer workshop here at Bethesda on Saturday, March 14th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Information is on the welcome desk and on the bulletin board. Beginning Sunday, March 15th, we will be having college and career after service. This is a time where members 18 years and up can get questions answered and help navigate through life's decisions you will face going into adulthood. Please come and join us every third Sunday right after service in the dining hall. This is beginning Sunday, March 15th. There will be a leadership meeting with Bishop on Saturday, March 28th at 10.30 a.m. This meeting is for elders, ministers, deacons, deaconess, and auxiliary heads. March 28th at 10.30 a.m. There will be a men's fellowship breakfast here at Bethesda on Saturday, April 4th at 10 a.m. This year's prayer retreat will be at the Asbury Retreat Center August 7th through August 8th. The cost is $135 and a non-refundable deposit of $60 is due by April 5th. That's a non-refundable deposit of $60. See Minister Diane McNeil to make your deposit or for more information. There is a flyer on the bulletin board with the details. The NFTA transit police exam is on March 28th, 2020. Applications and information are on the welcome desk. High school seniors, there are applications on the welcome desk for the Buffalo Urban League Scholarship. The deadline is March 13th, 2020. If you have questions for the bishop, you can place them in the box on the welcome desk. If you are interested in being baptized, you can call the church during business hours, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 716-884-3607. Please remember our corporate intercessory prayer is Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Wednesday and Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Also remember the Bethesda prayer line is open Monday through Friday, 5.45 a.m. to 6 a.m. Please remember to pray for those on our recovery list. Sister Jeanette Blanks, Sister Louise Finley, Sister Marion Gaines, Sister Sally Glasgow, Elder LaVera Scott, Minister Linda Tillman, Brother Don Turner, Brother Mark Coleman, and Sister Sharon Twitty. And on behalf of our Bishop and First Lady, thank you for joining us. And the next voice you will hear is Minister Paul Herod. Amen. Read Daniels. All right. I like the announcements all the way up there. Um, if you could turn the lights off, if the kids can come down um, at this time, uh, we, we want to uh, collect spare change and or dollar, dollars for the upkeep of the building, mostly dollars. <laughs> uh, they've raised with your change they've raised over 9,000 I believe over $9,000 so just give the kids a hand they've been doing this every week faithfully so thank you continue uh, we're going to have our special music with our praise and worship give our praise and worship team a hand and the next voice you will hear is son of this ministry pastor Andre Scott come on come on come on Come on, you can do better than that. Pastor Andre Scott will be the next voice you will hear. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. How many of us know that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper? He's everything that you need. Hallelujah.
a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's my light and my darkness. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know about you this morning, but he's a way maker. I don't know if he made a way for you, but I can tell you he's made a many a way for me. I'm here because he made a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When others counted me out, he made a way. Hallelujah. When the devil tried to take me out, he made a way. Hallelujah. He made a way. Out of no way. He made a road where there was no road. He made a door where there was no door. Just for me. Just for me. See, many times we sing songs and we don't, rec- we don't really pay attention to the word. We don't understand where it comes from. But I'm telling you, he made a way. When I should be dead in my grave, in a memory, he made a way. And I'm not by myself. There's many of you right now saying, if it had not been, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Somebody tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Sometimes I shouldn't have thought of where I would be if it had not been for the Lord. And sometimes I don't want to lift my hand. Sometimes I don't want to shout hallelujah. Sometimes I don't want to say glory. Sometimes. But he's been too good. He's been too good. Young people, you can go to your prospective places, but he's been too good. He's been too good. The presence of the Lord is here. Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Rise up off of your seat. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Give him audience. Give him your best. Give him your best. He's here. Stand to your feet and let him recognize that you recognize him. Because that's how good he is.
I'm trying to move forward. Let me say this. Somebody may be watching this and somebody may be in this room and you may be asking, why is he acting like that this morning? Let me tell you why. One reason why. Because on yesterday, my daughter gave me a call. and said, Dad, I was in a car accident. Normally, normally I would get anxious inside, but this time I was cool, calm, and collective. I didn't even ask her if she was all right. I, I should have, but I didn't. But I knew that God had her. Because God told me, I got your kids. My hand is upon them. Nothing's going to take my hand off of them. I am grateful to God today. So I recognize today that not just because I didn't get all anxious and all that, I knew that God had them, but I, I recognize that there's some maturity coming in me. That if God be God, if God be God, and he said what he said, then I got to trust him in what he said. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, I believe God. The word of God said, whose report do you believe? In whose report do you believe? Do you believe the doctor's report? Oh. I hear the doctor's report. I appreciate the doctor's report, but I believe his report. Mm, mm, mm. My God, you may be seated. My God, my God. Thank you, praise and worship. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Amen. I feel like singing, but I ain't going to sing. I feel like shouting, but I'm going to hold my feet. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Mm. Can I just follow the leading of the spirit, amen? Is that okay? Is that okay with everyone? All right. Excuse me, I, I'm not, this is don't matter right now. For those that don't come to Sunday school class at 9 a.m. at Bethesda World Harvest International Church, between 9 and 9.45, you're missing something. Amen. You're missing something. Today in Bible and in, in Sunday school class, the topic was about uh, offense. <laughs> Offense. I've been offended. What I'm going to do with that? What am I going to do with this offense that you have put upon me? <laughs> oh. Yes, 
every one of us in here probably at some point in time in our lives, no matter what our age is, that we have been offended. Children have been offended by their parents. Parents have been offended by their children. Preachers have been offended by the parishioners. Parishioners have been offended by the... No, that, no, not by the preacher. No, I didn't say that, no. <laughs> by the preacher. At some point in time, we've all been offended. And God understood this. God knew that in this life, we were going to have offense. We were going to offend and we was going to be offended. Amen? And so, because I get offended, there's a certain thing that happens when I get offended. Let me put it this way. In my flesh, there's a certain thing that happens when I get offended. Okay, I must be by myself up in here. In my flesh, I want to get back. So what we, what we have done in Christendom is we went back to the Old Testament and said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. You took my tooth, I'm taking two of yours. And, and, and it's, it's, it's interesting because, because we, we love God and, and we love people. But soon as somebody hit that nerve, uh-oh, you touched my spot, you in trouble. Now, we could be best friends for the last 25 years, but hitting my spot, oh, it's on and popping. When I was in law enforcement here in Buffalo, one day, my partner and I got a call to a church. I'm not going to name the church. I ain't going to name the pastor. I ain't going to name nobody because you, you, you probably know them. But I'm not going to do that. We got a call to a church. And when we got there, the deacons were fighting. The pastor was fighting. His wife, they was fighting. It was pandemonium up in there. Now, some of the people knew me. <laughs> and they were kind of ashamed. But I wasn't there to lay hands on nobody and pray for them at the time. I was here to rectify the situation under the badge that I was carrying at that time. You know what I'm saying? And so people get kind of shamed when I used to come to their house because I knew them for domestic violence. And nobody ever knows about that. I never tell it because that was my job. And that stays there. And I leave it there. And all these years I've left stuff about people that I knew happened, but that doesn't make them that it happened. And so I got to, we got to church and they fighting and all this. Come to find out there was an offense that was never dealt with. And I'm talking, and my partner and I are talking, we have a couple over here, we've got people, you know, just talking, trying to settle this thing so that nobody goes to jail on Sunday morning <laughs> in church. I was kind of sympathetic about that <laughs> on Sunday morning. But, you know, it was, it was interesting because it was, kind of find out it was something that happened a long time ago, but because we didn't deal with our issues of offense, they, they escalate into these, ish, these, these situations where it become very dangerous. And so this morning, I really believe that God wants to deal with your issues. Hold on, let me, let me rephrase that. God want to deal with our issues. <laughs> because first me, <laughs> then I can give it to you. We, we all got some issues going on right now. We jump and we shout, we scream hallelujah, we praise the Lord, and we love God. But we still got some issues. 
And see, many times what happens is in Christendom, we get the religious dome. How you doing today, sister? How God, God good to you? Amen. You highly favored, aren't you? What, 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 hold on. Just, I can't go. I can't deal with you. Go, go ahead. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly. Oh, all right. Oh, there we go. We, I'm blessed and highly favored. But on the inside, why are you talking to me? The Bible says this, and I think Matthew 13, uh, let me find it, 13, I believe it's 24, 23, 24, something like that. Let me, let me look at it. I, I don't have it, but let me. Uh, there was something very interesting, I believe. No, 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 no. It's, it talks about if you come to the altar with your gift. Was it Matthew? Somebody, come on, come on. Scholars. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So where's that? Matthew what? I thought it was 13 in my head. Yeah. Anyway. It says this. It says. If, let's get it again. 524. Ah, thank you. 524, a little bit off there. Ah, this, I, I, I want to read it because this, it, it, it's important. 924. Ah, let's, let's go to 23. This, it says, therefore, if you bring, oh, let's, let's go up even further. Ah, yeah, let's go to 21. You got you to you catch this. You can see this. It says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Hmm. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar. Hmm. Say it again. If you what? And then remember that your brother has something against you or an ought against you. It says, leave your gift. There before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come offer your gift. What is he talking about? What is he, what he's saying? He's speaking to the people and what people were doing was they had some issues, but they never settled their issues. So they would bring their sacrifices or their gifts to the altar to God and expect God to receive it. But God said, I, I won't receive it. I won't receive. This is what I need you to do. I need you to go. Your brother got an order against you. I want you to go reconcile with your brother. Hold on. Hold on. Say what? I did nothing wrong. Why I got to go to my brother? <laughs> he said, go. Reconcile and then come back and then submit your, bring your offering, submit your offering and I shall receive it. Many times we have been hurt and wounded, and I, I, we hear this, this, this thing called church hurt now. It's, it's a big buzzword now, church hurt, and it's true. People get hurt in church. People get hurt everywhere. You get hurt in your home. You get hurt in a job. You get hurt everywhere. You get hurt walking out this door. Somebody going to say something wrong to you, okay? He said, deal with your brother and then come back. And the problem has been is that I'm just talking about me. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about me. The problem had was, was with me is that I didn't ask for it and I didn't do anything wrong for them to do what they did to me. So why do I got to go to them? 
Me and God had a good conversation with that one. Because I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't grasp that. Why am I going to them? They hurt me. But our all-wise God is a bad, bad God. He awesome. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He's not making any mistakes. He knows what he's doing. We don't know his ways, but he knows his ways. He knows his result. I was sexually abused as a young boy three times. And I could not get past it. I kept saying, why did it happen to me? And so what began to happen, it happened uh, twice by a, a male and then once by a female. Once by a teacher in my high school. And I'm like, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Am I the only one in here? Something wrong with me. And I couldn't seem to get, so I began to try to prove that I was a man. So I went out hurting young ladies and I told them anything they wanted to hear to get what I needed to feel like I was a man. Can I tell you something? It never made me feel like a man. It was an illusion. All I did was hurt other people with my stuff. Long, God kept telling me, forgive them. And I said, I can't. So I kept on going in my way. <sighs> I couldn't understand why a God that says he loves me would let this happen to me. Oh, oh somebody. <laughs> Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about, apparently. God, you tell me you love me. Now, 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 now let, let, me, let me make this clear. I wasn't out in the world. I was in church. <laughs> Grew up in church all my life. Why, God, would you let this thing happen to me? I couldn't figure it out. I said, this pain is hurt so bad. The pain hurts. So the wound was deep. Some of you in here have experienced the same woundedness. By sexual abuse. By molestation. By incest. And your wound is still wide open. I tried every, I tried, I tried, I tried. I tried to just get past it. I tried to work past it. I tried to do this. I tried to play games past it. I tried to do sports past it. I tried to do everything, anything I could to try to get past this situation, but it would not go away. And I couldn't understand why, but God kept saying, forgive. 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 I said, forgive? How can I forgive? Do you know what they did to me? Do you know? God says, I knew. I was right there. Now that really messed me up. You were there? Why didn't you do something about it? He said, I was there. That's all he told me. I was there. So, but I had to come to a point in my life that I realized that in spite of what had happened to me, God told me to forgive, and that's what I had to do. That was a hard thing. 
And one of, the, one of the things that's happening today is that we have been wounded and, and struggling in the church with this woundedness and cannot seem to progress. We wonder why I can't get ahead in life. It's because you won't forgive. You won't settle and reconcile with, your, with a brother. You won't do what the word of God says. The word of God tells us to forgive those that wound us and hurt us. Do good to those that despitefully use us. Now that doesn't make sense to the rational mind, but to God it makes much sense. Because bitterness and anger is dangerous in our life. It doesn't just hurt other people. It's killing me. It was killing me. It was killing me. No matter what I did in life to try to get ahead, I kept finding myself never achieving because of unforgiveness. Now, on top of that, my, my biggest issue was not even those who sexually abused me. My biggest issue, I hated my parents. <laughs> Ephesians 6 tells us to honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. He said, this is the first promise with, compatible with a promise. Word of God does not lie. I dishonored my parents because of what I believed. I dishonored my parents because of what I knew that they did to me. But I did not forgive them. And because of that, I was playing out the death that should have been played out according to the word of God. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death is going to happen. If you are in sin, death is going to happen. It can't anything else happen but death. No matter what kind of perfume, you can put Chanel number five on it. You can put Gucci on it. You can put all those things on it. It's still death and it stinks. In my life, I tried on my own to forgive. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. But what I had to do this morning is I had to make a choice to forgive. Forgiveness is a hard thing when you've been wounded deep. Women in relationships. One of the things is women love hard. They do. They love hard. And when they get wounded, they wounded hard. But you got to forgive because it destroys your life. It will destroy everything around you. It will destroy. It will contaminate. It will infect everything in your life. Forgiveness. God wants us to forgive. God says this. He said, if you do not forgive, I can't forgive you. Uh-oh. And see, we don't want to believe the word of God when, when, when they're talking about us. We believe it, when, doctor, when it's talking about you. But when it's talking about me, oh, well, you know, he ain't saying that. It's in black and white print in the King James Version, Okay. He says, if you do not forgive, I cannot forgive you. What does that mean? It means if you don't choose to forgive your brother, God said, I can't forgive you. He said, I've sent my son. You have all the, you have, you, you can, you have all the rights to what I, what I sent him for. But if you choose not to take it, that's on you. Yeah. And you know what we do? We blame... I, <laughs> I blame everybody else for my stuff. Yeah, let me say this. It was true what happened to me. But me holding on to it was for me, on me, not on them. So what am I saying? I'm saying what happened to you happened. Yes, it's real and it's true. But, what, what, but you holding on to it and not forgiving, that's on you. And so what we do, we say, well, it's because, you know, for the married couples up in here, if you've been married any time past one month, you know what I'm talking about. Hold on. If you've married any time past one week, you know what I'm talking about. 
You're going to have some issues. You're going to have some difficulties because, first of all, you were growing. We're learning each other. And it, I'm going to rub you the wrong way. Listen, it's guaranteed, Doc. It's, it's going to happen, okay? It's going to happen. But, but if I keep blaming, if, I have to put my poor lovely wife, I have to blame her. She always tell me, she said, why are you blaming me? She tell me, I ain't the one who did it. Why are you blaming me? Really, it, but I blame everybody for my stuff. See, I wasn't taking ownership of my stuff. Watch this. What God told me, I, I, God finally answered me one day. He says, Andre, forgive. I said, why? I can't forgive. Why should I forgive? Blah, 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 blah. He said, Andre, I'm not, I'm not going to judge you based on what your father did or did not do. I'm going to judge you based on your response. <laughs> My response was what God will judge me on. God knows what the person did. He knows all of that. But he said, your response is what I've got to deal with you on. And that is in my heart. i got to deal with my heart. He said, I'm going to judge you based on that, your response. So my response had to change. If I wanted things in my life to change, my response has to change. Somebody once said the, the, the um, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a difference. That's insanity. But if you want something to change, you have to make a change. So I had to make a change. And so it was interesting this morning because in Sunday school, the, a question arose um, regarding, uh, it just slipped my mind, coming to old age. Um, no, no, don't do coming to old age. Don't come to old age. <laughs> don't do that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> wow. Amen. Moving forward. But we, we, we have to understand that, that my stuff is my stuff. God is going to deal with you if you hurt me. And what happens is many times in our lives, because we've been wounded, we also try to use God as a whooping post. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, I know what the Old Testament said and how, they, how the prophets spoke and that God avenged me of my adversaries and blah, 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 kill them and take them. That's not what God wants today. That ain't what he's talking about today. God wants love to be shown. God loves everybody. Uh, I had to find out that God loved the abuser. That was hard. You mean to tell me you love the man that did this to me? God says yes. As you mature and grow up a little bit in God, you find out, thank God he loved the abuser. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Some of y'all been holy all y'all life. Some of y'all been at this altar and they never left. Some of y'all never walked out that door. Some... Mm. If... Mm. If closed doors could really talk. All of us stay in this altar. Because this, I, was, I, was, I was telling people one day, I said, I told this, this couple of guys one day, I said, listen, man, I can't judge you and I can't, I can't come down on you. I know what you're doing, but I can't come down on you. I said, because you got caught. They got caught. But what about the things that I've done I didn't get caught?
So the Bible says this. It said, how is it that you can try to pull a little splinter out your brother's eye when you got this big beam in yours? Something wrong with that picture. I got a big book, big tree in mind trying to look around the corner to see your splinter. That's a problem. He said, first deal with your, your beam. <laughs> so you can see rightly. So your vision is clear rightly. Because when your vision is obscured, you don't see right. So pain causes and, and, and wounds cause us many times not to see right. My hurt was not allowing me to see right. I thought I was right, but I wasn't seeing right. Somebody tell me, we're talking about 2020 vision in 2020, right? So we need 2020 vision. We got to see right. So we'll be right. So we'll walk right. So we'll love right. So we'll treat our neighbors right. Oh. Somebody ask your neighbor, how you living? Ask your neighbor, how you living? What I begin to understand is that for, for most of my life, I was wearing a mask. You ever heard that thing called the great pretender? Many of us have been great pretenders all our lives. We, we act like everything's good in front of everybody, but inside we just jacked up. Mm, I think God trying to help the church this morning. See, we make all the great, the great uh, 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 words, we put them all together and string them together, and they sound so good to one another, so it makes people think that everything is all right. But when the reality is, I'm jacked up inside. And I'm in need of a savior. I'm in need of the love of the Father God. I'm in need of it in my life. So what am I saying? I'm saying that the Father says, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Love covers a multitude of sin. If, 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 if I could have went the direction in that I wanted to go with my message, it would have said, ask the question, what's love got to do with it? Let me answer that for you if you haven't got the answer. Everything. It was because of love. It's because of love that we all are sitting in the seats right now. Because if it was not for the love of God, we wouldn't be here. It's because of the love of God that we stand and we breathe and everything is, exists by the love of God. God sent his love. You're not getting what I'm saying here. God sent his love into a crazy earth to redeem the earth and to bring the earth, pull it back into the right fellowship with himself. But it took love to do so. Nothing else but love could do this very thing. So God sent love into the earth. He impregnated the earth with love. And his name was Jesus Christ. And he was our example of love. He was our example of forgiveness. Watch this. On the cross, while he was yet bleeding from his head, bleeding from his side, he said a statement that goes, goes deep into us. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He's Dying. They just stuck him in his side. His blood and water is pouring out of his side. His, his head is bleeding. He's naked on a cross. 
being displayed before all, being laughed at, being spit on, being ridiculed, being lied on. Yet he said, Father, forgive them. That's love. And see, not was he only seeing those there. He was seeing all of us. Mm. See, he wasn't just looking at those that were present. He was looking at every single one of us because we were all born into sin and shaped in iniquity until love arrived and gave us opportunity to share in the love. He was looking at all of us down through history. Everything that I did, everything that I could do, he, all, he saw it. And he said, Father, forgive them. But they don't understand what they're doing. Forgiveness. In my closing, forgiveness. I made a choice to forgive my parents and made a choice to forgive those who abused me. And that was one of the greatest days of my life. It totally turned my life around. See, forgiveness is not about the other individual. Forgiveness is about me. Forgiveness is for me. I know that it's hard. I know that what they did to you, I know what they said to you, I know what happened in your life and the things that are going on in your life, seeing that, yeah, yes, it happened, yes, 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 it happened. I know that. But forgiveness will liberate you from it. Yeah. See, as long as you're bitter and angry and, and hateful, you are connected to that thing. And it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. And if you don't deal with it, your life may not be very long because bitterness kills you as an individual. It, kills, it destroys the body. Hatred destroys the body. It's scientifically been proven that this, it's this word called embitterment. Embitterment, the scientists come up with a word called embitterment. And it's basically that when you are bitter, then what it does, it begins to eat away at you as a person. This is why you got much cancer. This, and it's not the only reason for cancer, but cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, doctor, am I right? All these things can be contributed to our unforgiveness. God knows what he's talking about. So this morning, I hope this helping somebody today. I hope it's helping somebody today. This morning, if you are here and you say, I need a change, <laughs> something has to change in my life. I am just tired of this path that I'm, I'm going down. I love God. I come to church. I pray. I fast. I do all these things, but I'm still having this issue. I can't stand my brother. I hate my sister. I hate this. I'm telling you, God is calling you today to a place of repentance and forgiveness. Yes, the thing that has happened to you, it was not your fault. It wasn't your fault. But your response to it belongs to you. God wants to change your response to what happened to you. He wants to change your response so that it could change your destiny. Now watch this. I ask God, say, God, heal me. Heal me from the wound. Heal me from the pain of all that has happened to me. And I said, God, take even the memory away from me. You want to know what God said? God said, I will heal you of the wound, but I won't take the memory. You know how people say, I love you, 
but I won't forget. We good with that in church. May sound good, don't it? I love you, but I won't forget it. Then baby, you don't love me then because you're going to hold this an account against me. And every time some come up, it's going to be rehearsed again. So you don't really love me. But God said, I won't take the memory. I, didn't, I couldn't understand that at first. I'm like, you won't take the memory? Just take the memory from me. I don't even want to, I don't want to think of it no more. He said, no, I won't take the memory because the memory I'm going to use for your destiny. Oh, God. It's a need for your destiny. Can I help somebody here? I don't care what has happened to you. God's got a plan. Mm. Hear me. God's got a plan. God told me that if it was part of the plan that I would go through what I went through so that I will have a destiny because what happens is that the thing that I went through, I'm able to go out and tell others who are in this situation and help them through the situation for the glory of God. That they don't have to die this way. They don't have to go to jail because their anger got over on them and they killed the person. And now they're rotting in a prison that never was meant for them. This is what bitterness and anger and hatred does. It causes you to lose your mind. Because I had almost lost my mind. I had went to kill the teacher who did that to me. I went to kill him and every person that was in that house at the time who knew about it and did nothing. But God. I had planned it out. I had begun to walk it out. Hear what I'm saying. I began to walk it out to the point that I had went to the place to, to do what I was going to do and I couldn't find the place. My tears are not because I'm sad. It's because I'm thankful to God. I knew the place, but I couldn't find it. It was gone. The house was gone. And I didn't understand it at the time, what God was doing. I was just still so caught up. So I went and disposed of what I had planned to do. It was years later that God began to deal with my heart of forgiveness and he revealed to me the reason he said, Andre, I didn't allow you to find the house. I hid it from you. Because that was not your destiny. <laughs> Out of my woundedness, I was to heal, not to kill. But see, when the enemy gets a hold of me, he'll turn that around to killing instead of healing. So I don't know who's here today. And you're feeling like God. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of doing this on my own. I'm tired of struggling. I'm tired of striving. This way, I surrender. I, f I want to forgive. And then I want to repent, God, for my part I played. I can't repent for my neighbor. I can't repent for my brother. I can't repent for the other person, but I can repent for me. My part. 
I don't know, yours may not be a sexual abuse. Yours may be somebody deeply hurt you, somebody uh, divorced, you had a divorce, and that crushed you, and you're still crushed. It could be something else that happened. It could be a loved one that died, and you're still crushed, and you're mad at God. Forgive. If you are here today, it could be your, it could be your child wound you deeply after all that you've done, after all that you've done for them, they would say these things and do these things against you. And you was, you've been holding that against them. His love today is for you. His love is for you. So if you're here, stand to your feet. You say, listen, I, I'm tired. I can't do this any longer. I got to let this go. I want you to come down from it. <laughs> God's going to liberate some people this morning. I, I'm, I'm telling you, like, listen, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to come down here because shame ain't got to let that shame go because shame is keeping you bound. Fear keeps us bound. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter. He said, take on my yoke. This has been burdening you for too long. It's been too heavy. It's not never, it has never been for you to carry this. important to you that it's, it's like your child it's like you up here pray like that God wants to break some chains this morning he wants to break some prison cells he wants to free some people this morning he wants to free you this morning do you believe that you don't believe that God wants to break every chain, every stronghold from your past, even the place of your imprisonment. He wants to break the wounds. And he's going to use your freedom as a point of freedom for many others it's not by chance that you are here Bethesda but God has planted you here that you may mature and you may grow that you may release and he wants to break it right now over your life he wants to break the strongholds of the past and he wants to give you a future of Jesus heal his heart heal every place of abandonment every place of abandonment heal them and break you to do everyone here 
want you to lift your hands. Lifting your hands is a point of surrenderance. Say, I surrender. And that I choose today. I choose today to make a change. God, it's hard to make a change. It's hard for me to do it, but God, with you, all things are possible. I need your strength. I need your strength. I need your strength, but what, what I need to do is I need to let go and let God. So this morning, I lift my hands. Say it after me. This morning, I lift my hands. Come on, say it. This morning, I lift my hands in surrenderance to you. I choose to let it go. I choose to forgive. I choose to release myself from bondage. I choose to release the individual who hurt me, who wounded me, who despised me. I choose to release them and I release the account that I've held against them. No more account. No more account. No more account. I let it go. 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 Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. You see it. You saw it. You were there. Break. Break it right now. Break the hold. Break the hold. And make her heart tender again. Make her heart tender again. Ah, my God. Do it, God. It's a choice. It's your decision. It's your decision. It's your decision. Better days are ahead. 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 God is wiping away the pain. He's washing away the pain. Better days are ahead. Better days are ahead. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. come to the altar those that are sitting in your seats some of you are still dealing with this right now yourself so don't let don't let this moment pass you by let it all go today leave it here as the old person leave it at the altar the old person say leave it at the altar leave it here today amen Hallelujah for what he's done for what he's done and what he's continually doing in the lives of his people amen let us remember Bishop and Pastor Joyce while they're away at vacation let's continue to remember them and his hand be upon them and the family while they're away and also let's remember Bridget Richardson and let's continue to pray for the family and the passing of her mother on last weekend. Just continue to uphold her. Amen. Let's uphold all of those here at Bethesda. Amen. Let's, let's uphold our, our body. Let's uphold this body. Amen. For it is the body. We are part of the body of Christ. Amen. We are a community of people here at Bethesda. Amen. 
we're going to uphold one another. We're going to love on one another. And we're not going to let offenses keep us from each other. Amen. We're going to deal with our issues. We're going to deal with those wounds. This was just a beginning of something that happened today. But this is something that will continue, that we must continue. When things arise, let's, continue, let's deal with it. Let's forgive. Don't let things hold. Don't let things hold. Don't let things hold. Because it's destructive. Amen. For those that have your offering, let's prepare our offerings. Amen. Let's raise our offerings. Father, we thank you for your people today. We thank you for the word. Father, we thank you for those, Lord God, who made a choice and a decision today to forgive and to repent, Lord God, for their part. Their part, Lord God. No, they didn't. They didn't. The person did it to them. But Lord, our part, what was my part? I ask you to forgive. And they have done that, God. And so we thank you for those who have done it, Lord God. And we pray that you continue to move on the hearts of your people and this place, Lord God. And we, and we give our offerings today and leave this place with never your presence. Lord God, go with us. Angels camp the Bible to keep us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are dismissed. Please come from the prayer to the front. God bless you.